Hello and welcome back to the technical guide to Factorio! Woo! So good! Woo! Okay, that, that's enough of that. For now. Next time, we'll get more wooing, but for now, you know. Okay, so this time we work on a couple of things. First off, we work on getting a solar panel system up and running and actually putting those solar panels in a decent grid. A very space efficient grid. We also set up some accumulators over yonder. And as we start out, you will notice that there are a few things different about our entire factory. First off, there will be lights. I actually put up lamps so we can see in the nighttime because that's kind of an important thing. And I've switched the entire system over to medium electric poles. All of the turrets were switched over to laser turrets. And there were just some minor tweaks to a few systems as well as the introduction of a whole new steam set just to increase our power output. Anyway, that is a thing. So we work on accumulators and solar panels. And then we work on actually grabbing some stone, which is out yonder. We have a small colony. It's hard to see. It's actually hard to walk around this area, but there we go. We have a colony out here picking up stone. And that stone is picked up for the eventual production of electric furnaces. And we work on actually putting together our plastics and parsing out where exactly we're going to produce advanced circuits to eventually put into the, electro the electric furnaces. Oh, every time, research. Every time! Why do you do this? Why do you do this? We're also trying to work towards tanks, because I love tanks. So, let's get right into it and actually work on building our factory. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is get set up a line for the production of solar panels. So let's check out what we need in terms of producing solar panels. That is right here. We need steel plates, electronic circuits, and copper plates. So that shouldn't actually be hard at all. That should be darn easy. So if we want to get that working... By the way, where are all of our batteries? I just realized that. Our batteries are, like, gone right now. We're not producing batteries because there's no copper going out because... Ah, it looks like the long arm inserter that was supposed to be picking copper off of this somehow got destroyed. That's not the best. There you go. Copper galore. So now we'll get batteries coming back down here and this will start getting back to work. But we need copper, electronic circuits, and steel. So building the production line down here shouldn't be too hard. We'll start with a quick picker off of the copper line because that is, my friends, one of the easiest things that we can do in the world. Okay, everything's flashing. That's not the best. Um, we really, we really do need to get on top of that power situation. It's not the best. So, we will need an assembly machine Mark II in order to complete this. And then it's just a matter of getting the, the steel out from here and across that system over to this one. Hey, wait a minute. We already had an assembly machine Mark II. Why did we have an assembly machine Mark II in our inventory? That is weird. That gives me an inkling of a suspicion that something is not in the right place somewhere else, which would not be the best. So if we just do that, I think that should work for both systems. I've never really had pickers pick from behind an underground conveyor belt, but I would guess that since they seem to be able to pick from, like, beside an underground conveyor belt, they should be able to pick it from behind as well, so... Cross your fingers, people. Hopefully it works out. Um, we'll throw this dude down here. And that should run our nice system for the production of solar panels. So... Let's also immediately work on getting these accumulators up and running. Because even if we don't have solar panels, we can get a decent accumulator set up. And it'll be fueled by the, um, the steam engines instead of 
the solar power. So, I guess we'll just set them up in a grid. That shouldn't be too hard. And with a plethora of accumulators up in this house, and of course we're going to have a plethora of them because we need a stupid quantity of these dudes in order to make everything that we have work because we, we have a lot of stuff right now. Um, and that should pretty much make it so that our system no longer flickers to high hell every time the laser turrets fire because that's really not the best. I don't really enjoy that. Although it is a good strobe light and it is very good for any sort of rave that we want to hold, especially with the biters because the biters are, of course, vicious ravers. They are all about it. Um, it's really for the best that we... Oh, no. That we... Um, make certain that those lights don't flash all the time. So we didn't actually put a picker to put this stuff into a box. So they haven't produced a single solar panel yet. That is not the best. That is not the best. So we'll put that box down there. And now we'll start producing solar panels. So we'll wait until we have a few more in there before we actually start putting down a solar panel system. Because we're going to do a very specific shape of solar panel system that is rather efficient in its space usage. And that will be just brilliant. Okay. So we're not going to be able to fill, like, the entire area with accumulators. At some point, we'll have to have open spaces in the accumulator grid to put in a couple poles to deal with the ones in the center, which is kind of unfortunate because you... I, I would prefer to have, like, a massive full-on grid of just thousands of accumulators and no space in between because that sounds amazing and the sound they would make would be ridiculous. But um, it's just not something we can do. I'm so sorry. It's not a reality. Unfortunately, you're going to have to find some other land if you want that to work. So that's a decent grid of accumulators. And by decent, I mean that's actually, that's actually a rather large grid of accumulators. We now have... Looks like we'll have 200 megajoules of power all stored up. I don't actually know how much 200 megajoules of power actually, like, can power. But it'll definitely power our turrets every time they fire. And that's the big thing about this right now. Okay, so we've got ourselves nine solar panels. And a copper furnace that is out of fuel. There we go. So, looks like, of all the places in our base, this one looks like the best place to throw something up here. We can put it probably down here, because this looks like prime real estate for a manufacturing area. But over here, this is perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to do squares of four solar panels, and we're then going to stagger it by one block out there, and then we will have our next grid come down one block. And this will create, in all of these little blocks, one little opening here. And it's in that opening we're going to put our electric poles that should assist, that um, should make maximum usage of the space in this grid of solar panels. So these dudes, now that they're hooked up, should very nicely be powering our system. Let's see how much it's producing. 538 kilowatts. That's, that's a tiny quantity. It's a very, very small quantity. That's like toaster quan quantity. That is disgusting. We need more. We need more power! It's true, though. It's legit. We need so much more power than we have right now. So that is how our nice grid is going to look from then on out because it is so brilliant. And between these and the accumulators, we will definitely have enough power to run these laser turrets and a bunch more laser turrets as well, which is going to be important because we do need to start thinking about our future defense 
at some point. So the one big issue when we're looking at our defense right now is the fact that we don't actually have a good supply of stone in here. This is also an issue for the next level of furnace as they do require stone. If you look over yonder, we have our electric furnaces which require advanced circuits, steel plates, and stone bricks. Um, so unless we have a good supply of stone bricks, we can't really manufacture those indefinitely. So we will have to find that stone. That, that's actually not a terrible quantity of stone. Let's, let's take a closer look. Hello, stone. How you doing? I mean, it's not a great quantity of stone. We could do better, but at the same time, we could do a lot worse. So I'm thinking we take this for ourselves, because, of course, the entire world belongs to us, and we're going to take whatever we want to take. So let us secure for ourselves a little colony up there. I mean, it's not very far from our main base. It's actually just, like, right next to it. It's like if you decided to make a colony in your neighbor's yard, which I'm pretty sure your neighbors would not be happy about you making a colony in their yard. But at the same time, I mean, it's literally right next to you. It's very easy to just, like, take your fence and extend it out into your neighbor's property and just be like, well, I'm sorry, mate. Um, unfortunately, I have decreed that this place is mine and no one else will own it. Yeah, that... I don't think they'd agree with that very much. Anyway, our, the one thing we need is a few turrets in order to actually get that system set up. So we're going to wait for the production of just a few laser turrets. And then we will get to working on our first nice colony. Okay, so we got for ourselves three turrets as well as turning uh, um, pretty much all of our stone bricks that we had left over from the old stone production into um, walls that we can use to actually assist in the defense of our system. So we're gonna bring power out here because of course we need power because they're laser turrets and electric drills. How do you expect any of those things to work without power? It's very important that we have tons of power. So we're gonna do that. And we'll just get our laser turrets out. And that should be a decent setup. I don't know exactly where the enemies would come from if they came out here. But this is a pretty good bet. I mean, these turrets are pointing in the direction that isn't our base. And half the time, that's a good idea. So we're going to put that down. And now we have a defended fortification. And we're going to put... And we're going to actually start producing our nice stone. So we don't really need to produce any straight up stone because that stuff ain't worth it. Come on now. What we need is to produce some smooth stone. So instead of shipping all of the stone all the way out to like our main facility and processing it there, which seems like quite a waste to me. We will instead just produce, um, take the stone, produce it into smooth stone here, and then ship the smooth stone back, which should be a nice situation. So we need more iron in order to finish that up. But um, we're going to send it back via a very long conveyor belt kind of similar to our coal line actually pretty much exactly the same as our coal line our coal line is huge it's ridiculous it is actually out of this world though and that should fuel both the creation of walls and very importantly the creation of electric furnaces which will mean that we no longer have to fill our furnaces with coal which will make me so happy because you know what stinks Having to fill your furnaces with coal every five seconds, it's disgusting. Nobody likes that. You don't like that, do you? If you like that, I mean, I guess you're kind of a strange person, because, I don't know, I, I don't consider that to be a good time. But if you consider that to be a good time, I mean, uh, I'm not going to judge your life choices. Although your life choices are pretty terrible. 
I'll try not to judge them too much. Are we out of conveyor belts? I thought I made a lot more conveyor belts than that. So, um, I think what we want to work towards next is the production of advanced circuits to actually get our electric furnaces up and running. Of course, having electric furnaces means that we'll have to have a much more robust power system than we have right now because, of course, currently none of our furnaces take any power at all. And we want to switch it to a fully powered furnace system. And that's going to be quite a thing. So... What we want to do is set up as much of the framework for the creation of advanced circuits as we can. What this requires is plastic bars, which we can't make yet, but we are hard at work at the creation of plastics right now. As well as um, electronic circuits and copper cables. So that shouldn't be too difficult. Um, the one issue is that I've just... I just recently in the um, interlude between actually setting up that colony upgraded our production of electronic circuits and now it seems as though we are running low on copper cables because copper cables are kind of kind of a problem child of most systems so we're going to need to expand both it appears the copper plate production which is a new thing to me. Apparently we need that. And we're going to need to expand our um, copper wire production. Because both of those are absolutely key to the creation of what we want. So, um, here we're definitely going to see... Oh, we got plastics. How nice. So good. Gotta love plastics. What should we work on next? I think the next thing we want to work towards is probably getting tanks. Uh, because tanks are what I use personally to go and wipe out biters because they're the worst. So to get there, we're going to need engine engines. So we're going to work on the engine technology, eventually get a car, and then get a tank. Because cars are pretty useless and tanks are... They're pretty good. I'm going to level with you. I quite enjoy a good tank. So, for the plastics, we're going to actually need to work on producing our plastics. Strange concept, but it's a thing regardless. Um, in order to do that, we're going to need a chem plant to um, actually produce the plastics. So plastic, if I recall properly, is simply one coal and a bit of petroleum gas. So we have coal here, of course, and we have our petroleum gas here, which we set up last time in preparation for the creation of plastics. And if all goes according to plan, and we hook that up right there, plastics, three petroleum gas, one coal. Shut up, technology! What you doing, mate? What you doing? Do we need electronic engines to get cars? No, we need logistics too. There we go. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. We got the petroleum going in. At what rate do we actually produce petroleum? So this system creates four petroleum every five seconds. And this creates one plastic every one second. Okay, yeah, we can only actually run one of these off of our system as is. Just needed to make sure. So, we'll just have a picker picking off this line and bringing the coal up to this plastics area. The plastics really don't require all that much coal, but of course they require some coal, so it has to be done. It's not going to be a huge drain on the system. And then, we're going to have to pull this plastic out and eventually somehow get it all the way down to our production area for the advanced circuits down yonder. Oh my word, that will be a logistical nightmare, I can tell you that much. And I think that will bring us at this point to the end of the episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe. Next time we'll get advanced circuits actually up and running and before next time, I will work on 
actually building the line to bring the plastics out to here because it's going to be absolutely crazy figuring that out. And once we've got advanced circuits actually being produced, we should be able to then build ourselves some electronic furnaces. Not electronic, electric furnaces. There is a difference. And with that, we should be able to switch our entire system over to electric furnaces, deal with the power issues that would arise after that, and then, you know, go on from there. So why are these all disconnected? Oh no, I'm not producing any coal right now. That's the worst. Anyway, until next time, of course, thanks for watching and there we go. Enjoy the rest of your day.